Well, as you probably know, Donald Trump, he's been going ballistic, insulting Gold Star parents, refusing to support leaders of his own party. And that's not even close to most shocking stuff. Wait till you hear what he is saying about using nukes. Also, Robert F. Kennedy Jr., he joins us to talk about his new book on the Michael Skakel case. Kennedy is defending his cousin, who was convicted, as you know, of murdering a neighbor in 1975. Then our legal panel weighs in, talking about the Skakel case and a whole lot more. It's coming right up. Evening, everybody, and welcome to RFL. I'm Richard French. Thank you so much for joining us this Wednesday night. Well, yesterday we told you about Trump's day full of goffs, insults, and really unbelievable statements. It's a day in politics many of us cannot remember anything close to resembling. Now, we're not the only ones, apparently, who have noticed. Reince Priebus, he's the head of the Republican National Committee. It's their job to get Republicans elected. Well, apparently he called Trump last night to express grave concern as well as outright frustration. Priebus, reportedly especially upset about Trump's treatment of Khazar Khan and his wife. They, of course, the Muslim Americans who lost their son, a U.S. soldier fighting in Iraq who was posthumously awarded the Bronze Star. But that has not stopped Trump from going after each of them. Trump has been pretty much universally denounced for this incident. And now NBC News is reporting that Priebus is teaming up with Rudy Giuliani and Newt Gingrich to have what can only be called an intervention to try to talk Trump into toning things down. Reportedly, they're going to try to get Trump's kids involved, even Chris Christie. Now, maybe they can even talk Trump into endorsing some fellow Republicans, call a crazy, who have primary elections of their own. Trump, to this point, refusing to support the House Speaker Paul Ryan, or let alone Senators John McCain, Kelly Ayotte, and I can rattle off a bunch of others. Then there is this. You have to hear this to believe it. Listen to what Trump has said about nuclear weapons and also what the former CIA director, Michael Hayden, as well as the NSA chief, described how easy it would be for President Trump to actually push the red button. Here's a clip from this morning's Morning Joe. Several months ago, uh, a foreign policy expert on the international level went to advise Donald Trump and three times he asked about the use of nuclear weapons. Mm. Three times he asked at one point, if we have them, why can't we use them? That's oh, wow. one of the reasons why he has, he just doesn't have foreign policy experts around Trump, him. Trump asked three times. Three times in an hour weapons. briefing, why can't we use nuclear weapons? The steps, Donald Trump decides to use a nuclear weapon. Uh, what is the time frame between his decision and when the nuclear weapons are launched? Joe, it's, it's scenario dependent, but the system is designed for speed and decisiveness. It's, it's not designed to debate the decision. Now, on top of that, another prominent Republican. We told you about New York Congressman, uh, Congressman Hanna, uh, who decided not only would he not support Donald, but he would be voting for Hillary. That's a sitting Republican. Well, add another name to the list, Meg Whitman. Now on Team Hillary, Whitman currently the CEO of Hewlett Packard. She's also a GOP fundraiser who ran for governor as a Republican in California just a few years ago. She lost. Now she's hoping Trump does the same. Let me bring in my friends here, Dominic Carter, political journalist and author, and Andrew Whitman, our senior political correspondent. No relation. In no relation at all. <laughs> you cannot make this stuff up. We also have another story here that apparently you have Republican leaders huddling wondering what would happen, gaming it out, if Trump quit. There's growing sentiment. I know this sounds like something of House of Cards or something, that Trump, and you've alluded to this in the past, that maybe he didn't really want to be president all along here, and when it gets tough and he doesn't, and he doesn't like the criticism or whatever, he'll take his ball and go home. You had House and Senate leaders reportedly huddling to say, what if all of a sudden he throws in the towel with less than 100 days to go in the election? For those who follow at home here, and this was not in the West Wing, but this is how it would really work, they literally would have to have the Republican, I, I guess the, uh, the delegates or whatever, uh, pick another um, nominee, 
hopefully get that person, uh, that Trump would have to willingly quit. They couldn't get rid of him at this point, even if they wanted to, and then that person would uh, theoretically run for office. But that's not going to happen. Trump's not, not, Trump's not going to quit. Don't ever say no, at no, this no, point, no. that the, won't happen. I can tell you 20 the, things you said would have happened that I, happened in the last weekend. Yeah, but given all of my expertise being able to diagnose people's personalities, <laughs> which is none, I mean, is there? does anybody really think that Donald Trump, whose brand is built on success and himself being such a bigwig, would actually quit? No. I mean, he, he will go down to defeat and he will blame the Republican Party, he'll blame the media, he'll blame, you know, voter fraud, he'll blame anything Listen, he can. I, I acknowledge what he's I'm not, saying is insane, but this has been the most insane week of politics I can remember. I'll only say this much. I've never, Dominic, met or covered a thinner-skinned person, period, let alone a person campaigning for president. If he believes that there's a foregone conclusion that he is a laughing stock and he's going to lose, I don't put anything past him to try and deflect him and blame someone else for his problems, maybe not even in a post-mortem capacity. Put it this way. It's not me coming up with a scenario. You have Republican leaders saying, what if this guy quits? They think it's that unstable to campaign right now. The idea that they're bringing in Chris Christie, okay, like he's the paragon of virtue. Christie, Newt Gingrich, another, you know, holier than now, um, and the family to try and have an inner Prevention. Have you ever heard of such a thing? I haven't, but I don't know if I believe those reports, Richard. Um, he, he is making a complete, that is Donald Trump, he is making a complete fool of himself as of late. I could never in a million years see Trump dropping out of this race, uh, as Andrew said. Say you guys are right. I, I just, he's persona non grata. In some circles, no, no. in some circles. Yeah, okay. and, and middle America, okay. but the you know what? On top but of you know what? Stuff, the stuff with Paul Ryan, the stuff with Kelly Ayotte, the stuff with John McCain, these are all people who have expressed reservations about Trump. Right. So he's returning the favor. Right. And actually, he can hold them to their feet to a, 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 a a stronger fire because they all face primary okay. challenges. More and more he's folks, won his primary. More and more folks are saying, and maybe you'll say later it won't make a difference, but the fact of the matter is, I will bet money that Paul Ryan, if Trump doubles down here, will within the next week pull back an even tepid endorsement of Trump and he'll say, as I would if I was him, politically as well as as a person with any more convictions, he's found my line. I, I can't do this anymore. First of all, we're seeing other Republicans do it, so it's not like he'd be the first one doing it, including sitting elected ones. Now, even if you say, oh, well, this is an anti-establishment election, who cares what anybody thinks and all the rest, look at the numbers, guys. It, it, we can't discount every single poll. She's up eight, nine points in a bunch of polls, and in every, with the exception of white guys, she is beating him and but beating him not, by that, margin. But that's not true, Richard. She's up nationally. In some battleground states, he is still but ahead. But also in other states that have been historically Republican that's for the true. last so many years, that's true. she's she, actually winning she's in those. She's still in a post-convention bounce. So, I mean, the polls are slightly inflated in her favor right now. She's also... When's the last time Hillary Clinton made a headline for anything? Why should she? No, no, I understand that. Would but you, it, she would but be crazy point, But at some point, that worm will turn, and she'll either say something or some story will she come out, what, and she'll be she the focus. Has. What is the uh, longest the window that Donald Trump has gone without putting his foot in his mouth? Forget about this week. That's a good question. Okay? Exactly. That, 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 that's My a good question. My point is, if he went on vacation the last two weeks, if he left the country and played golf, he'd be better than he is right now. Who... And, and if you think about what kind of mistakes they are, no matter, and we have our own politicians that we just would love to put our arms around their necks, right? But he's insulted the parents of a soldier who died and got a bronze star. He's insulting members of his own party. His daughter, I mean, I'm sorry, he said when asked what would you do if your daughter was sexually harassed, he'd tell her to go find another career. I, I can't make this stuff up, and there's more guys, right? He told a woman. I mean, who insults a baby? You kiss babies let in me, politics, let me, right? Let me, let me you throw a mom end, out with a baby. Let me take the other Please end of the don't try and argue no, just to argue. No, I'm not. Insane. I'm not. But this is the worst week in political history, as you're laying out. And he's down what five? No, in the polls. Well, you and I both know or eight or nine, or nine in some the numbers. Yeah. I mean, and he was up though, Andrew. Shouldn't before he that. be down a lot more if well, he's having this week from hell? If I follow you, that's where he was before the week started. By the same polls, and again, you put some credence into them and levels, whatever. He was he was up three or four I'm just points. Saying, go careful, go careful. The pendulum swings back; it always does. You've heard Republicans and what they're saying, right? Yeah. And they're not afraid. They're very, very afraid. And now people are starting to say, "Can you trust this guy with launch codes?" Yeah. And I think it's a fair question. All legitimate questions. Okay.
Dominic, keep quiet. All right. <laughs> Do you feel that? Uh, yes, feel a better? little bit here. Uh, but I will tell you, I, I know people that are legitimately worried, um, forget your political party, that they've never seen somebody like this before and what he is capable or incapable of doing. All right. Um, we come back, guys. Uh, we're going to be talking uh, some uh, legal cases and a case here with some notable figures. Robert F. Kennedy Jr., he will join us. He's going to talk about his cousin, Michael Skakel. Infamous, famous, however you want to say it, and for all the wrong reasons. Convicted of murder. Kennedy says, though, his cousin was framed. We'll talk to RFK Jr., and then our legal panel weighs in.